did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets. Radical, violent, extreme, and bring them to justice. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Still in the afterglow of the last of the presidential debates, having shared the Republican response yesterday, today we get the Democrats' take. Joining us is Democratic analyst Michael McCoy from Rutgers University. Thanks for joining us today. Very glad to be here. Uh, we all sat and watched, uh, hoping, to, I, I'm, I'm supposing each side, hoping that uh, one man would take control. Your thoughts on what you saw? Well, I think this was a definite win for the president. Uh, I think on the particular points, point by point, on foreign policy, um, they were actually pretty even, really because Governor Romney kind of switched many of his positions towards those of the president, so there wasn't really a much of a difference as we might expect, as we would have originally have believed going in between the two candidates. But I think if we look at sort of the broad fundamentals of this race, this was a clear win for the president. And the reason is because really the president for, for a win needs to hold together the coalition, the coalition he had in 2008. And obviously it brought him a huge win uh, four years ago. It will bring him another win this year. And so what he really needs to do is he needs to fire up his sort of liberal base, that being um, young, young people and minorities, and bring in sort of working class whites and suburban women. And I think when you saw sort of the energy he went after uh, Governor Romney, you saw that he was very energetic as opposed to the first debate where he was a little more lethargic. And he showed himself as a very strong commander in chief, which has always been one of his strong suits, certainly from throughout really his presidency. And I think those things together is really propelling him forward as opposed to, again, past debate performances. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, we talked yesterday with the Republican analyst, and, and we pointed out that Mr. Romney tried to take the sting out of the president's assessment, that, uh, which he's repeated, that mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden is dead. Uh, to that, Mr. Romney said, well, we can't kill our way out of this mess. Uh, I thought that was a very uh, a good strategy to try to know uh, the president's advantage on the uh, Osama bin I think, Laden. Case. I mean, I, I, I'll give credit where credit's due. That was a good line. I mean, I think it was obviously planned, very you know, and very well delivered. But in terms of actual policy, what was Governor Romney getting at? I mean, in terms of what he would do differently than the president. What did that mean? Was, was he saying that he wouldn't have gone after Osama bin Laden? I don't think that's something that's going to really do well for him public support. Mm -hmm. Is that saying he's not going to go after Al Qaeda leaders? I don't think that's going to do well for him. So I don't know in terms of actual substance what that did for him. It might, again, good clip, uh, well delivered, but but not enough. But if we actually, you know, if we went past that surface and we pushed him and said, okay, Governor Romney, therefore, what will you do differently than the president? I don't think we have a clear answer on that, and he certainly has never given a clear answer. Uh, I want to uh, draw your attention to something the president uh, uh, tried to seize on over and over and over, and that is the, the, the so-called flip-flopping that uh, Mr. Romney has done. We're going to uh, play you a little clip and uh, show you how he picked out the shifting policy stance, which Mr. Romney himself seemed to reveal. I congratulate him on, on taking out Osama bin Laden and going after the leadership in Al-Qaeda. But we can't kill our way out of this mess. We're, we're going to have to put in place a very comprehensive and robust strategy to help the, the, the world of Islam and, and other parts of the world reject this radical, violent extremism, which is, it's certainly not on the run. Some of my strategy is pretty straightforward, which is uh, to go after the bad guys, uh, to make sure we do our very best to I interrupt them, to, to uh, uh, kill them, to uh, uh, take them out of the picture. But my so to me, this suggests again, we go, we can't kill our way out of the mess, but we're going to go and kill them. And the president seized on that. Do you think he did it effectively? Absolutely. And again, I mean, right there, he said, well, we're going to go after the bad guys. What's the president been doing? I mean, the al-Qaeda leadership has been pretty much wiped out by this president. So I don't really know what Governor Romney is going to say he's doing differently. And in terms of saying we need a comprehensive program in the uh, Middle East towards the Muslim community, this is the president who has been a, a strong supporter of the Arab Spring. And again, prior to this debate, he had been critical of the change in Egypt. He had been critical of U.S. policy there. Uh, he had been critical of the Libya intervention, except when he wasn't critical of it. And again, at this debate, suddenly he's saying, I congratulate the president. I agree with the president. The president has a good point. So this is only going to work in the president's favor. Let me and ask the, you, let me stop there oh, and, sure. and ask you about a, another little clip we're going to run. Uh, and in this, Mr. Romney tried to redirect the conversation over and over to the economy, which perhaps is his strongest point. We'll take a listen. We have weakened our economy. We need a strong economy. We need to have as well a strong military. Our military is second to none in the world. We're blessed with terrific soldiers and extraordinary technology and intelligence. 
But the idea of a trillion dollars in cuts through sequestration and budget cuts to the military would change that. I, I look around the world and I, I don't see our influence growing around the world. I see our influence receding. And the, the central question at this point is going to be who's going to be credible to all parties involved. And they can look at my track record, whether it's Iran sanctions, whether it's dealing with counterterrorism, whether it's supporting democracy, whether it's supporting women's rights, whether it's supporting religious minorities, and they can say that the President of the United States and the United States of America has stood on the right side of history. So we hear two sides, mm -hmm. uh, two very, very different sides. Your, your thoughts on what you heard there. So I actually want to pick up on two things that were said there. First, uh, Governor Romney, he talked about how we need to improve the economy, and then he said we need to put more money into the military. He is saying we need to put more money in the military than the military is asking for. The military has actually said, you know, we don't need all these, uh, we, we don't need all this hardware, we don't need all these things. And really what we see is a lot of lobbyists are pushing for this because they want to get, you know, money from the government. And so he's saying that I want to improve the economy, but then I also want to spend things on the military the military doesn't want. So that doesn't really make sense. And I think that resonates with people that they understand we can't do both. We can't improve our economy and pay for things that we don't need. Do you think the president has sold his credibility on world, world affairs? I, absolutely. And I think actually that, so that's the second thing I want to get to. I think on this Iran question, I think this was actually really one of the president's strongest moments during the debate in terms of talking about Iran and talking about not only the sanctions, the heavy sanctions, which we know are crippling their economy, their currency is in free fall. But he also talked about the fact that four years ago under President Bush, when we tried to put these heavy sanctions on Iran, no one was behind them. The world community would not support us. Four years later, there's pretty much global consensus about this program. And I think that that really is through the president's leadership. And I think he did a very strong job of pushing that forward because this has been one of the, um, Governor Romney's major things. You haven't been tough enough on Iran. You haven't been tough enough on Iran. Well, the president really was showing, not only have I been tough on, on Iran, I've gotten global consensus against Iran. And now, again, their economy is in free fall. And we just saw a recent uh, New York Times report the source of which is a little, still a little hazy, but that Iran is now looking to strike some sort of deal which could possibly mean an entry to the nuclear program. All right, Mike McCoy, always insightful. I'd love to get you guys together and uh, I hope we'll, see, so. <laughs> we'll see how that argument goes. But thanks again. We'll look to have you again soon. Thank you. Check out the best national and international news coverage on ebrutoday.com. Watch newscasts, experts on global affairs and specials. That's 24-7 on ebrutoday.com.